Good morning. Welcome to Chisholm Creek Baptist Church on this beautiful morning. Let's stand and worship the Lord God Almighty. Father in heaven, how we love you. We lift your name in all the earth. May your kingdom be established in our praises. As your people declare your mighty works, blessed be the Lord God Almighty, who was and is and is to come. Blessed be the Lord God Almighty, who reigns forevermore. Father of mercy, be exalted. May Jesus' name be lifted high. For the sacrifice of love has won my pardon. And his resurrection power gives me life. Blessed be the Lord God Almighty, who was and is and is to come. Blessed be the Lord God Almighty, who reigns forevermore. Let's sing that chorus. Blessed be the Lord God Almighty, who was and is and is to come. Blessed be the Lord God Almighty, who reigns forevermore, who reigns forevermore, who reigns forevermore. We do welcome you this morning to Chisholm Creek Baptist Church. Uh, nations may rise and fall, but our God's kingdom is eternal. Amen. And that is, a, in today's world, that's a blessing to remember. Uh, we welcome you, like I said, and if you have a prayer need, we have prayer request cards, and there's a prayer stand out in, by the name badges, and there's a slot to put your prayer requests in. There's cards on top of that. And please know that if you put your prayer request in that prayer stand, our uh, prayer room me members will pray over your request, and we will keep it confidential. Pray for our deacons, their wives, and our deacons are listed on the back of the bulletin. We've had people kind of want to know who they are. And if you're a deacon and deacon's wife here this morning, would you stand? Okay, look around, and uh, we're sure thankful for all of you. Um, our Tuesday, our men pray at 9 o'clock in the commons area, and Wednesday night, we have a wonderful Wednesday night service, and I couldn't believe how many, it seems like they keep growing in the uh, adult Bible study. They had 35 people there last Wednesday night and 25 the week before. Uh, Dan is, is teaching on Job, the book of Job on suffering. Uh, Brother Travis leads our youth, and they have a wonderful time on Wednesday night and Sunday morning, too. There's a place for everyone as children's awanas. And this night, Wednesday night, is camo night, so kids are encouraged to wear camo clothing. And uh, I guess we're not supposed to see them. I don't know. No. <laughs> <laughs> but there are adult choir practices. We didn't get to practice last Wednesday night, but we're hoping to practice from 8 to 8.30 this Wednesday night. And seriously, if you love to sing, we'd love to have you. Yes, because we would. Because we, uh, we would just, we have some gone, quite a few gone this morning, but I know Brother Bryant would love to have you. I sure would. Okay. That would be great. <laughs> And uh, Grace Rescue Mission, they appreciate, I appreciate Roger and Linda taking all that food to the ministry there. And do you want to say anything about that mission? They have re requested eight ounce uh, little containers of evaporated milk if you would like to participate in that and, and do that. And uh, that's pretty much it because we've got what we need here to help them and and I'll be making a, another run over there this week. So uh, thank you. God bless you. Come on now. Praise <laughs> the Lord. So, uh, well, it's good to see you all this morning. And um, uh, I, I amen everything about the announcements. And also this Wednesday night, we will be 
in the book of Job again. Uh, Lord willing, we'll finish up chapter 2 and move over to chapter 3. It's my intention to try to do a chapter a week, but uh, so far uh, it's just too intense here at the beginning to, to do that. But we, we'll, we'll get it all rolling here soon. And uh, uh, I encourage you to come. If you never have suffered, you really won't need to come. It's only for people that's ever gone through suffering. All right. So, uh, <laughs> so if that's you, we want you to come because God's got some wonderful things to teach us through the book of Job. As I said last Sunday and Sunday before, Job played in the Super Bowl of suffering, and he, and he came out a victor. Amen? And so, um, uh, and, you know, it's such a great book. It is, I, I believe, and many of my uh, teachers in seminary said the same thing, it is the oldest book of the Bible. And so, um, uh, I hope that you will be able to join us. If you're a guest today, we are indeed grateful that you've come. Here's what we ask you to do if you would do this. If you're a first-time guest, please just fill out the information on there. It says, let's get acquainted. Tear that off. And back there is the big old chest. That's where we place our offerings. And uh, you can just place that in there, and then that will, uh, I'll call you and thank you for coming. Um, also, I want to mention what I said last Sunday, too is that our deacons passed and that we are now giving to a clinic that is helping ladies. 85 out of 100 who see the ultrasound will not abort their child. Amen. And uh, I want you to know part of that's there. And, uh, and we're not done. Uh, you know, we could have taken the monies that we were making payments with and just put it on ourselves. But as I shared with the deacons, and they agreed, is that let's give it away. Let's put it in ministry. We're very close to the Lord's re return. What better investment than to help uh, people come to Christ and not abort their babies? That's one. We're, we're going to make some other investments too. We ran out of time in deacons meetings, so we uh, I'd already kept them about two and a half hours, so we, uh, 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 we've got some others that we, we're going to be uh, doing, Lord willing, and uh, I believe that honors God, amen? And uh, so, uh, uh, that's my heart there. Well, God bless you there, and it's good to see you. I hear what we're going to do is greet our guests now, so I ask that you just remain seated if you're a first-time visitor, et cetera, and all of our regular attenders to stand, and we want you, our members, to greet everyone in the name of the Lord. We don't know sometimes who's guest and who's not, but we want you to feel welcome here. So God bless you. Thanks for coming. And so let's, uh, church family, would you stand, and guests, would you stay seated, please, just for a moment? And, and greet those folks around you, please. Oh, I'm sorry. One more thing here, Brother Dan. I, I made a mistake, so it's, it's I, not I'll, evaporated I'll it. milk. It's powdered milk. What's that? <laughs> it powdered milk on the oh, oh, on brain. Okay. I'm I, sorry. I, 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 so I don't mind being you. corrected. Thank you so much. Amazing yeah. grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. I once was lost, but now I'm found. Was blind, but now I see. Twas grace that taught my heart to fear. And How precious did that grace appear The hour I first believe My chains are gone, I've been set free My God, my Savior, has ransomed me And like a flood, His mercy Unending love, amazing grace. The Lord has promised good to me. His word, my hope, so He will, my 
my shield and portion be as long as life endures my chains are gone i've been set free my god my savior has ransomed me and like a flood his mercy reigns unending love amazing grace the earth shall soon dissolve like snow the sun forbear to shine but God who called me here below will be forever mine, will be forever mine. You are forever mine. Jesus, keep me near the cross. There a precious fountain free to all a healing stream flows from Calvary's mountain in the cross in the cross be my glory ever till my raptured soul shall find rest beyond the river near the cross I'll watch and wait hoping trusting ever till I reach the golden strand just beyond the river in the cross in the cross be my glory ever till my raptured soul shall find rest beyond the river i love you lord and i lift my voice to worship you oh my soul Rejoice, take joy, my King, in what you hear. May it be a sweet, sweet sound in your ear. Let's sing that again. I love you, Sweet, sweet sound.
sound in your ear. Brother Dan. Amen. Thank you, Brother Bryant. Thank you, choir. I appreciate that very much. Well, <clears throat> I was shaking hands a while ago. I was back here with Betty, and she said, you got a big X on your back. And I said, what? How did I get an X there? So she said, oh, well, it's because you hadn't cut your coat. You said, you must have new clothes on. I said, yes, it's my birthday suit. So um, <laughs> it's the one made out of cloth, all right? So <laughs> I've got two of those. And so, uh, but... Um, uh, but uh, we'll get those things cut sooner or later. But no, my wife gave me this, so I'm very grateful. I told her I'd wear it today. And uh, I, I, found, I asked her, I said, it's all right, I don't want to wear a tie. I hate ties. But um, what, what's the purpose of a tie? You got a piece of cloth hanging around your neck. What does that, what does that do for anybody? I mean, just <laughs> chokes you. That's all it does. So, uh, but I do wear a tie when it's the Lord's Supper and... I guess other stuff. I don't know. <laughs> Christmas, maybe. I don't know. Well, this morning, I want to thank you not only for being here, but this is going to be a very difficult message for me to preach because it, it deals a lot with theology. And you say, what? A theology. Now, you study theology every Sunday when you're, you're here. You just don't know it. But today, you're going to definitely know it uh, the word theology simply means the study of God, theos, Allah. And so, the study of God, that's what we're going to do today. And I need you to really pay attention. I'm going to lose you like a bar of soap in the shower, I can tell you. And I don't want to lose you. So, uh, um, today we're going to look at the angel of the Lord. Now, this, is, this term is used 59 times in the Old Testament. You say, are you going to look at all of them? No, I won't. But uh, or we'd be here till next Sunday, probably. But I did look at all of them this week. There's nine more on top of that. It's called the, the uh, angel of God nine times in the Old Testament. They're, they are synonymous. It's the same angel. This angel is far greater than Michael. Michael, the great warring archangel, but we've already studied him, but he goes far beyond that. He's far beyond, the, he knows a whole lot more than uh, Gabriel, and he's a lot more communicative than Gabriel. This angel is the Lord Jesus, what we call the study of the pre-incarnation of Jesus Christ in the Old Testament. Jesus did not begin his existence at Bethlehem. Jesus Christ is God. Amen. Now, you don't hear that in a lot of churches, and I don't know if a lot of pastors even say it hardly, but you're going to hear it today because that's the truth. If Jesus is not God, there is no Trinity. Amen. He is indeed God. In the beginning, John 1 says, in the beginning was the Word, the Word Logos, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. Amen. Verse 14 of that same chapter, and the Word became flesh, incarnated. He put the word carna is the word for flesh. If you go to a carnival, you've gone to a place of fleshliness. One of my favorite things, I always love freak shows and stuff like that. <laughs> but, uh, but that's where we get the word carnal. It's flesh, incarnation. Sometimes, depends on which school of theology you go to, it's the same thing, the pre-existence of Jesus Christ, and we see Him. So either way, it doesn't really matter. I thank God that God is with us. Jesus Christ was God in the flesh. He was the Son of God, but He's also the God, the Son. Amen? If this is not true, like I said, if God is not eternal, that means Jesus lied, and He cannot be anyone's Savior after that. 
You say, well, wh- how? What? Because Jesus said in John 8, 58, Jesus said to these Pharisees, verily, verily, I say to you, before Abraham was, I am. He uses that term, Yahweh, in Hebrew, which means Yahweh. That's God. And so, um, oh, praise the Lord. Jesus Christ has always existed. And thank God He's with us. He never leaves us, nor does He forsake us. So since the Lord Jesus has always existed, where was He in the Old Testament? Thank you for asking. That's what we're going to look at. Uh, What was He doing before He was born in the Bethlehem manger? And a partial answer to that question is the focus of what we're going to look at. Um, And so, in the Old Testament, there's an angel that materializes from time to time, and he's different, as I said, from all the other angels, and praise God for that. The angel is more powerful than any other angel, more wise. Now, in theology, we call this a theophany. Sometimes it's called a Christophany. It's it's the same. Theophany is theos, God, ophane, which means God. Thank God He is the powerful one, the mighty one, the uh, God-man. He is both man and God, Jesus, uh, when He came to this earth. And so, praise God uh, for that. And then, also, He speaks as God and claims uh, to exercise the prerogatives of God as what we're going to see. Now, if you'll take your Bibles, and I encourage you to take your Bibles and follow along, because I want you to see this in the Old Testament with me. We're going to start in Genesis 16, and we'll keep making right-hand turns, all right? We'll just go boom, 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 boom. I'm going to take you not through all 68 of the text, because like I said, 59 plus 9, that would make 68. And uh, so uh, I thought if I could just find one more, it could be my same age, you know, but I, I, it, I can't do that. So, um, but I'm just going to take uh, about five or six, et cetera. So uh, I haven't actually counted them up. But first of all, I want you to see the angel of the Lord with a lady named Hagar. Hagar. So we see this in Genesis chapter 16, verse 10 and 11. When Abraham and Sarah refused to wait longer for God, you know, to come upon them. Now, I'm going to just give you a little pretext before I start reading the text. But uh, to, they, they, you remember what they did? They took the, the handmaiden, Hagar, and this was an Egyptian custom. It wasn't anything that God said to do. So they obviously heard it from Hagar because she came out of Egypt. And so... Uh, and finally, Sarah thought, I'm getting to, too old to have a child. You're getting too, almost too old to uh, father a child. So they thought, we better help God out. So they had a child through the handmaiden, which was the custom of the Egyptians and not God's, not God at all. However, uh, that now uh, that she's had relations with Abraham and this child is conceived in her, ultimately, uh, Hagar runs off. Now, she's going to leave home twice, and uh, so you're going to see that she was the handmaiden, and so let me go ahead and get to the text here. Genesis chapter 16, verse 10, then said to her, I will multiply your descendants, the, the Lord, the, the angel of the Lord speaking to her, exceedingly so that they shall not be counted uh, for the multitude. And the angel of the Lord, do you see that? I would... I might, we might put a star, or I don't know if you mark in your Bibles, uh, circle it, etc. The angel of the Lord said to Hagar, <clears throat> Now, uh, behold, you are with child, and you shall bear a son, and you shall call his name Ishmael. The word Ishmael in the Hebrew text means in God who hears me, the God who hears me. And because the Lord has heard your affliction, Hagar, Now, Hagar realized that the angel of the Lord, it didn't take her long to figure this out. This is God himself speaking to her. All right, let's pick this up. Verse 13. Then she said, then she called the name of the Lord who spoke to her. You are the God who sees. For she said, have I also seen him 
who sees me. Wow, <laughs> that's pretty heavy, I tell you. Now, let me just help you with a few things before we get too far. When you see in the Old Testament or the New, it doesn't matter, the word capital L, lowercase o-r-d, what does that mean, that, that word Lord? Well, that's the word Adonai, Adonai, which means sovereign God, sovereign God. L, capital L, little case, L-O-R-D. Now, <laughs> uh, if you um, uh, go on and look at the L-O-R-D, now that is a totally different deal because that is, now in Hebrew, there are no vowels. They're just consonants. That's why it's kind of unusual. But that is our word, yake, the most holy word in, that's why all L, capital O, capital R, capital D, that is Yahweh. It's pronounced Yahke in Hebrew, but it is the most holy name that God, the Jews won't even use it, even to this day. They take very offense if you use that, um, even to this day. But uh, let me go on here. Now, <clears throat> Hagar realized the angel of the Lord was out questioned God himself. She could understand, and we can see that in this text. And then let's go on down just a little bit further. Um, the second time she goes back, God tells her to go back. So she goes back and to submit to uh, he, the Lord. The angel of the Lord said, submit to your, hand, uh, your mistress. So she does that. Now, now that the the, the child Ishmael, the one that God hears me, is a, a, a small boy. And every time Sarah sees her, H Hagar, in the small boy, it just upsets her because it just reminds her that she gave to her husband what she could never give. Now, God said that that would happen, and God will take care of that later. <laughs> Uh, you know, he wants to make sure there's no way they can do it on their own. Abraham is a hundred, and, hey, and um, excuse me, not Hagar, Sarah is 90. And they will have, you know, the wonderful miracle son, Isaac. And so praise God for that. God's going to keep his word there. So um, <laughs> now it, I've always thought what, if Abraham was living today, he would go to Walmart and buy uh, depends and diapers at the same time. Amen? That's how old he was. All right. All right. I'm sorry. I just thought I'd throw that in. So, uh, but um, <clears throat> now here, the second time, Sarah, she runs off Hagar and, and tells them to leave. This is the second time she's in the desert. Now, here they are out in the desert without food or water. Verse 17, Genesis 21, I'm sorry, I didn't give you the text. Genesis 21, verse 17. And God, please circle that. And God heard the voice of the lad, then the angel of God. Now that's, like I said, that appears nine times in the Old Testament. It's the same as we see the angel of the Lord. Called to Hagar out of heaven and said to her, what ails you, Hagar? Now, he already knows what ails her, but she wants, him to, she wants her to say it. Fear not, for God has heard the voice of the lad. And he asked, well, where he is? And, of course, he's under the bush. And, and then in verse 19, I'm not going to read it to you, but God opens the eyes of Hagar. She sees this beautiful spring, and now she gets a jug, fills it up, takes it over to the bush where her little boy is dying underneath there, gives it to him. Now, <clears throat> and so we see that. And, and thank God, if God had not intervened, there would not be any Arab people in the world today. So well, why would God do that? Because God does things we can't understand, amen? And God is gracious. God is kind. He's not going to let that little boy die out there with, uh, uh, because, you know, he's the God who hears me, and I heard him. So the second thing, we see the angel of the Lord with Abraham. Let's keep moving. We're going, this is going to make another right-hand turn. Genesis 22, verse 11 and 12. 
Abraham was about to sacrifice his miracle son Isaac on the Mount Moriah. That's probably Golgotha. That's where Jerusalem is built. He was stopped by, guess who? The angel of the Lord. Now, the Bible clearly states this. The Jews believe this is Michael. It cannot be Michael because we know who it is. But let me read it to you. Genesis twenty two eleven. But the angel of the Lord called to Abraham from heaven and said, Abraham, Abraham. So he said, here I am. And he said, do not lay your hand on the lad nor do anything to him. For now I know that you fear God, since you have not withheld your son, your only son from, and please note, it is capitalized. Who is that me? Well, that me is the angel of the Lord. That's where um, it refers back to. However, that me already, he said, is God. Amen. Amen. So they are synonymous. And and please, I want to say, if you please circle that or to identify that. The angel of the Lord is the Lord himself. Amen. And so we go on to the third thing, and that is the angel of the Lord in Jacob. Now, if, um, you know, the word Jacob is not really a, really a super duper word. You know, it means Jacob was a twin to Esau, remember? And when, uh, so Esau was birthed first, but Jacob was grabbing hold of his heel. It's called heel snatching. And so, and that means supplanter, that he would be a trickster, a con artist. And that's what he was. He conned Esau out of his birthright, being firstborn. He also tricked his father, Isaac, the miracle son that was born to Abraham. That's his father. And so he tricks him to get the birthright. And God said, you know what? I got to teach this guy a lesson. So he sends him to live with his, because he's afraid Esau's going to kill him for taking that. So he runs off and he goes and joins the, his uncle, Laban. Now, if Jacob was a con artist, the master con artist was Laban. And he sees one of his daughters. Oh, Rachel, I want her to be my wife. He said, well, you have to work seven years to get her. So he worked seven years. And then he said, well, Laban, I worked seven years. I'm ready to marry Rachel. He said, now, wait a second. Now, when we do weddings, we always have them at night. And she'll be completely covered. You won't be able to see her. But that's just how we do it. He said, I could care less. Let's get it on. You know? So, uh, they get married. And he wakes up the next morning. And guess what? Wrong woman. How did this happen? So he goes running to Laban. He said, hey, I got her older sister. He said, yes, I know. But what's the deal? I worked seven years for Rachel. He said, no. In our country, we honor the firstborn. Uh Uh-oh. Payback time. Amen. He said, if you want Rachel, you'll have to work seven more years. And he did. And he did get her, praise God. And God, uh, you know, he taught. He was teaching Jacob. He was breaking Jacob. That's the, the book I'm writing is on brokenness. And you're going, I'm going to use all these guys, I can guarantee you. And so, uh, <clears throat> so we, we see that here. The angel of the Lord uh, spoke to him there. Now, let's go to Genesis chapter 31. And we're going to look. Uh, at some of what, how God used Jacob. This is Genesis chapter 31, verse 11 through 13. Then the angel of God, same as the angel of the Lord, as I said, they're synonymous, spoke to me in a dream saying, Jacob, and I said, here I am. And he said, lift your eyes now and see all the rams which leap on the flocks and the streaks speckled and graves spotted. For I have seen all that Laban, your uncle, is doing to you. (laughs) I am. Wait a second. I am who? The God of Bethel. But but verse 11 said it's the angel of the Lord. It's the same. 
where you anointed the pillar and where you made a vow to me. Please note the capitalization. Now arise, get out of this land and return to the land of your family. He says, okay, you finally learned a lesson. Honor the firstborn and back home you'll go. So it was God speaking to him as the angel of the Lord, but he knows real quickly it is God himself. Because may I say to you again, Jesus Christ is God. Amen? Don't ever forget that. Now, the cults like to say, oh, they'll come to your door, oh, oh, he's a great teacher, a wonderful person, but he's not God. Well, that makes them a cult. Anyone who denies the deity of Christ, you can classify as a cult. But as Jacob, excuse me, as Jacob um, gave his last blessing to Joseph, I want you to see that. Now, he, now, this is late in his life. He's ready to die. He's had 12 sons, and out of those 12 sons come the 12 tribes. Amen? And now they've gone down because, remember, they sold Joseph into prison. And now Joseph has brought them down there, brought, brought his dad down there, and he is dying. So he's blessing all of his 12 sons, and Joseph is one of those. So this Genesis chapter 48, verse 15 through 16. Genesis 48. And he blessed Joseph, and he said, God, before whom my father Abraham and Isaac walked, the God who has fed me all my life long to this day, the angel who has redeemed me from all evil. Now, what angel has the power and the authority to redeem anyone? The angel of the Lord the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. And so we go to the fourth, and that's the angel of the Lord with Moses, one of my favorite ones. You remember Charlton Heston? That's Moses, all right? So, um, so when God set out to call Moses into the ministry, he made sure it would be an experience. But remember, he kills the Egyptian, and he says, all right, I'm ready to be your, uh, your deliverer. Let's all get out of here. And they said, no, we're not going with you. You're a murderer. So he gets exiled, and for 40 years, he's on the backside of the desert in Midian. That's Saudi Arabia. He's back there with Jethro, his father-in-law, keeping sheep for 40 years. What was God doing? He was breaking him. Because, you see, he said, hey, I, I'm ready to go with you, God. I'm your, I, I will lead these people out of here. I'm the great deliverer. <laughs> he, but um, God says, you're nothing. Without me, you're absolutely zero with the edges rubbed off. So Exodus chapter 3, verse uh, 1 and 2. Exodus 3, 1 and 2. Now Moses was tending the flock of Jethro, his father-in-law. Now he's 80 years old. He was 40 when he left Egypt. He's been there 40 years, and God has broken him. The priest of Midian, and he led the flock <coughs> to the back of the desert and came to Horeb. Now, yeah, that can miss you can, the, the mountain of God. Horeb is what the wilderness is called. Sinai is what the mountain is called. All right. Liberals try to say, well, this means there's a contradiction in the Bible. That, that's so stupid. I mean, sometimes I can't understand how they even chew gum. It's amazing. But verse 2, and the angel of the Lord appeared to him in a flame of fire from the midst of a bush that would not burn up, remember? So he looked, and behold, the bush was burning with fire, but the bush was not consumed. <laughs> As Moses tried to get a little closer to that burning bush to investigate it, God spoke to him within the fire of the bush. Let's see, verse 5. Then he said, do not draw near this place. Take your sandals off your feet. Now, everyone knew in that day and time, you take your sandals off when you get in the presence of Almighty God. For the place where you stand is holy. Now, wait a second. That's just Mount Sinai dirt. What made it holy? The presence of God. Amen. Wherever God's presence is, that's holy. Amen? And so, uh, uh, so all other uh, angels refused to be worshipped in the book of the Revelation. 
the, uh, I mean, these are not fallen angels. These are the holy angels of God. Twice, John the Beloved in the book of the Revelation, he was so overwhelmed of seeing what was happening in heaven and what God was doing. He fell before the angels in worship, and the angels said, I, I don't, I'm not going to give you the exact quote, but it was like this, you better get up or you're going to get in trouble, and you're going to get me in trouble for letting you do this. So, I mean, let's get back up and get rolling. I'm just a messenger. The word angel is anglios, which means a messenger. And so, uh, verse 6, Moses knew he was dealing with God. Verse 6, moreover, he said, I am. Oh, there's that Yahweh again, that Yahweh, the Holy. I am the God of your father. I, I'm trying to talk like Charlton Heston. The God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, the God of Jacob. And Moses hid his face, for he was afraid to look upon God. Now, wait a second. It said it was the angel of the Lord. Uh, 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 how, how, does, how does that all? Because the angel of the Lord was God himself. That was the Lord Jesus there. And that's how we should worship. We are to adore him. We are to just... Add. So when we say we... I, I heard some people the other day... And I don't mean, I'm not going to use any names. They're not members of our church. I was um, witnessing to one guy, and these people came by and said, Oh, man, we went to church the other day, and boy, did we have some great worship. I thought, wait, wait a second. You had an, uh, kind of like a, you know, a liver shiver, or well, I don't understand it. Uh, worship is not to, for us. It's to him. Amen. It's always to him, not to us. I mean, I thought, hey, you need to turn this. Uh, I, well, I didn't. They're not, you know, uh, I better quit moving on here. But, uh, <clears throat> you know, I am the God of the fathers. And you know, we see that. Then let's go to verse 13. Then Moses said to God, indeed, when I come to the children of Israel, and I say to them, the God of your fathers has sent me to you. And they say to me, well, what's his name? What shall I say to them? Pretty good question. Verse 14. And God, the angel of the Lord, said to Moses, I am that I am. I am everything you need. That means there is nothing yake. These are the most holy words. Like I mentioned to you before, only the high priest once a year on Yom Kippur would go into the into the holy of holies, and after he presented the blood, he would whisper the name Yahweh, Yahweh, I am Yahweh. Amen. And uh, that's how holy I am. <clears throat> and he said, "Thus you shall say to the children of Israel, I am has sent me to you." Verse fifteen. Moreover, God said to Moses, "Thus you shall say to the children of Israel, the Lord God of your fathers." The God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, the God of Jacob has sent me to you. This is my name for how long? Forever. And this is my more memorial to how many generations? That includes us, folks. Let's move on to number five. The angel of the Lord and the children of Israel. Oh, my goodness. I couldn't leave this one out. As the children of Israel are making their escape from Egypt and traveling through the wilderness, you know, they don't have a... A GPS. Um, they don't have a map. They don't even have a wife to tell them which way to turn. So, um, um, but you know, I, I was working, I was reviewing my notes this morning, and the Lord impressed me. I, I get here around six, and I like to just spend time alone. And all of a sudden, God said, Yeah, yeah they do have a GPS. It's God's precious Son. That's their GPS. Amen the angel of the Lord, God's precious son. But notice here, the Lord went before them by day in a pillar of cloud to lead the way, and by night a pillar of fire to give them light. So in Exodus, let's look here, Exodus 13, 21. Exodus 13, 21. And the Lord went before them by day in a pillar of cloud to lead the way, and by night a pillar of fire to give them light, and as to go by uh, day and night. In verse 13, uh, now, notice here, the Lord did this. Now, notice here, the word Lord 
is in all caps, and as I mentioned to you before, that's Yahweh. That's the most sacred name that God has. Now, uh, it, is it God or the angel of the Lord? The answer to that question is yes. It's both. Amen. Exodus 14, 19. Let's go there real quick. Exodus 14, 19. And the angel of God, synonymous to the Lord, who went before the camp of Israel, moved and went behind them, and the pillar of cloud went before them and stood behind them. The Lord and the angel of the Lord, like I said, are the same. The angel of the Lord is capable of forgiving sins. What? Yes. Exodus 23, 20, and 21. Behold, I send an angel before you to keep you in the way and to bring you into the place which I have prepared. Now, this is God the Father talking. Beware of him and obey his voice. Do not provoke him, for he will not pardon your transgressions if you provoke him. Now, for my name is in him. What in the world? What kind of angel? If there's only one, before Abraham was, I am. No ordinary angel in the Old or New Testament is ever associated with forgiving of sins. Amen. The angel of the Lord. I like it when they were lowering that guy down in Capernaum. And, uh, and so the first thing is they, Jesus sees their faith, the Bible says, as they lower him down, tear the roof off, lower their friend down. And so... The first thing Jesus does, because he knows all the religious nuts are around him, all the Pharisees, and he said, I forgive you of your sins. And the Pharisees freak out. They go nuts. They say, only God can forgive sin. I would have given them an A plus on their theology exam for that. They, they are exactly right. Only God can forgive sin. The only problem is they don't know God is standing right in their presence. Amen? Hallelujah. Well, um, <laughs> let me move on here. The, the, the sixth one I'd like for you to see is the angel of the Lord and a man named Manoah. <laughs> Year, uh, been, it's been a few years ago, I was at Falls Creek, and I asked the youth, who is Manoah? And one young man said, it's the wife of Noah. And uh, I said, pretty good. I, <laughs> and so um, <laughs> it's sort of like these little kids, they asked them, who are the epistles? And they thought for a while, oh, it's the wife of the apostles. Uh, some people, well, that sounds reasonable. So... Um, but uh, Judges chapter 13, verses 3 through 5, uh, we're going to see Manoah's wife. It doesn't give us her name, so we'll just call her Mrs. Manoah. Uh, was, she's barren. She can't have children. That day and time, that was a, a bad uh, signal. So then one day, the angel of the Lord appears to her and told her that she's going to have a son. Now, that son's name is going to be Samson. And he was to be a Nazarite. Uh, to God from the very, very womb. And so let's pick it up. Judges 13, 3 and 5. And the angel of the Lord appeared to the woman, Mrs. Manoah, and said to her, Indeed now you are barren and have borne no children, but you shall conceive and bear a son. That's the greatest news any woman in that day and time could have heard. Now, therefore, please be careful not to drink wine or similar drink, and do not eat anything that's unclean. Why? For behold, you shall conceive and bear a son, and no razor shall come upon his head. For the child shall be a Nazarite to God from the womb. Now, you say, well, his strength was in his hair, his strength was in God, but the, uh, the Nazarite vow was to, to say, God... I, I don't cut my hair. I only eat certain things, only drink certain things to bring honor to you. And so when the hair was cut, he broke his vow. So, and he shall begin to deliver Israel out of the land, out of the hand of the Philistines. They were a bad group. Remember the giant from there, the Nephilim from there? Yeah. Goliath? Yeah. David took care of him. In fact, I kind of think they, he, took, he had four brothers. That's why he picked up five stones. <laughs> Just pop, pop. You know, that's no problem. 
But Manoah's wife told her husband all that had happened. And he wanted to see this angel, so he prayed that God would send him back. Hey, look, it's not fair. You, you, you appeared to my wife, but I want to see this angel too. And so, uh, not, you know, so, so verse 18 of the same chapter. And the angel Lord said to Manoah, why do you ask my name, seeking, seeing that it is, now I want you to hang on to this word, wonderful. That in Hebrew means beyond human comprehension. There's no way you could take it all in. Ah, ah, I wish I had more time. Isaiah chapter 9, verse 6. His name shall be called Wonderful, Counselor, Mighty God, Prince of Peace. Amen. Beyond comprehension. So uh, Manoah and his wife made a sacrifice of thanksgiving to the Lord because they were so pumped up. They were so thrilled that they're going to have a child and it's going to be a Nazarite and he's going to uh, fl- fl- you know, free them from the Philistines. Judges 13, verse 19 and 22. So Manoah took, that they're going to make a sacrifice. That's what they're going to do to say, thank you, God. Thank you, O Lord God, for for giving us his promise. So Manoah took the young goat and the grain offering and offered it upon the rock to the Lord. And he did a wondrous thing while Manoah and his wife looked on. It happened as the flame went up towards heaven from the altar, the angel of the Lord ascended in the flame of the altar. When Manoah and his wife saw this, they fell on their faces to the ground. And when the angel of the Lord appeared no more to Manoah and his wife, then Manoah knew that he was the angel of the Lord. And Manoah said to his wife, we shall surely die because we have seen God. Amen. And indeed they had. But God the Son, if they'd seen God the Father, they would have, they're, they're gone right then. They had seen the angel of the Lord, who is God. There are many others. I wish I had time to go through them. But, you know, uh, something else hit me this morning. Manoah, you remember where he lived at? A place called Zorah. You know where Zorah is? Just a few miles from Bethlehem. Here comes Jesus in this flame. And he knows in the shadows of Zorah, is where he's coming and putting on human flesh so that one day he will die for our sins. Amen. Well, hang on. I've got to pick up a little speed here. The angel of the Lord and the pre-incarnate Christ. Praise God. The Bible presents a picture of this angel is a cut above any angel there's ever been. And praise God for that. He is the pre-incarnate Christ. I mean, before He put on human flesh. The Lord Jesus put on human flesh at Bethlehem. However, he is always the second person of the Godhead. Amen? And so praise God. John 1, 18. No one has seen God at any time. Only God the Father, the only begotten Son, who is the bosom of the Father. He has declared him. Please note the capitalization of him. After Jesus comes in Luke chapter 2, and he is incarnated in that. And, you know, I thought uh, of a good question. Um, why didn't, uh, why didn't Jesus come back as the angel of the Lord at Bethlehem? I have to hold my emotions together here. It's because he didn't come to die for angels. He put on human flesh to die for a little kid named Dan Maxwell over in Jones that was just wicked. You said, eight, you were wicked? Yes, I was pretty wicked, that's for sure. But I thank God he redeemed me and you. Amen? Hallelujah. (laughs) Oh, boy. Uh, Now I want you to, 
I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do a narrative sermon on this this next Christmas, Lord willing. The road to Emmaus after the resurrection. And so here's Jesus with these two disciples. We don't really have all the information there, but he's with his two disciples, and they invite him in to spend the night. Luke 24, 27. And beginning at Moses and all the prophets, what did Jesus do for these two disciples after the resurrection, after he died and rose again? He expounded to them all the scriptures, the things concerning himself. Now, wait a second. Jesus is in the old. I've been trying to say that all the way through here. Yeah, absolutely. He didn't start his existence at Bethlehem. That's ridiculous. (laughs) Um, You know, praise the Lord. I can just see him with these two. And I'm going to try to do this one day. But um, he said, oh, you should have been with me when I spoke to Abraham. (laughs) You should have been with me when I was with Hagar. You should have been with me when I led the children of Israel. He told them all about himself. And remember, there's no New Testament yet. So it's all the what? Yes, that's right. If you want to learn the New Testament, study the Old Testament. Um, uh, That's how you learn the New Testament. And so, I always say this, and my time is almost up, and I want to do something special for you, but but so what? So what, Pastor Dan? Isn't that, oh, this, I mean, you're taking this all through the Old Testament. So what? Uh, I want to bring some application to us, all right? The angel of the Lord in us, number one, the priority of revelation. That's what it is. Today we are blessed to be, have two great revelations, our Lord Jesus Christ and his holy breathe out word. We have that. Praise the Lord. In the Old Testament, all they had was the first five books if they had that, the Pentateuch. Job had nothing, all right? So, uh, we we see that there. The Old Testament was coming about when Jesus had not yet come, and none of the New Testament was there, but praise God, God penetrated the darkness of those days occasionally by revealing Himself as the angel of the Lord. Hallelujah. And then I want to look at not only the priority of revelation, but the purpose of the incarnation. The Old Testament He appears as the angel of the Lord, simply pointing to the day that when he would fully reveal himself as God's only begotten son. You say, well, is there any more verses to back that up? Thanks for asking. Colossians 2, 9 and 10. For in him, capitalized, who are we talking about there? The angel of the Lord, the Lord Jesus Christ. For in him dwells how much of the fullness of the Godhead bodily? All, all, say it with me, ready? All the fullness of the Godhead bodily. Praise God. I wish I could just preach on that one thing there. But you say, Pastor Dan, if Christ showed himself as the angel of the Lord, why did he not let angels? I said, because, look, again, I say it again. He didn't come to pay for angels. He came for you. He came for Adam's ruined race. Number three, we see the preciousness of our Savior, our salvation. God revealed himself to man through the angel of the Lord. However, there was no salvation in that revelation. No angel could die for mankind. God would have to become one with us. And that's what we see in Philippians chapter 2, verses 5 through 8. Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus who being in the form of God, did not consider it robbery to be equal with God. He was the same as God the Father. But he made himself of what? No reputation. Taking the form of a bondservant, a douloi, a a slave by choice is what that word means. And coming to the likeness of man and being found in appearance as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient to the point of death, even the death of the cross. Hallelujah. Amen. <laughs> I'm just about ready to go on a holy run here. And one more thing, I, I had to add, that I was ready to put that, that's it, I'm not going to do any more. And God said, oh, yes, you are. I want you to see the person of our Savior. The person of our Savior. 
When we study the angel of the Lord, we are giving a preview of the ministry of the Lord Jesus Christ. Isaiah described him so beautifully. Isaiah 63, 9 absolutely pulls everything I've been talking about together. Now listen closely. In all their affliction, he, capitalized God, was afflicted, and the angel of his presence saved them. In his love and in his pity, he redeemed them, and he bore them, and he carried them all the days of old. What a Savior, amen. What a God we have in Jesus Christ. Oh, hallelujah. And uh, yesterday as I was here doing some study, the Lord uh, revealed something to me, and I, I, I want to do it for you right now. Uh, if you would give me five minutes of your time more, then we'll have our invitation and go. Remember, his name is wonderful. It's beyond comprehension. Wonderful counselor, mighty God, prince of peace, Isaiah 9, 6. Hallelujah. I want you to know, folks, he's more than wonderful. Oh, you know, I, as I was studying earlier, uh, I, I, t I found out there's 150-something references on clouds. Over 100 of them deal with the glory of God, the Shekinah of God, His glory. That's what lit up the face of Moses. That's what made Moses bow down. That's what Abraham got, the Shekinah glory. I want you to not just hear theology this morning. I want you to worship him, love him. The Bible says you have to accept who you are and where you are. You're a sinner. He came to die for you. He had you on his heart at Calvary's cross. Oh, today, if you'll call on his name, Romans 10, 13 says, whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord not might, not could be, not the name of Baptist, not Presbyterian, not Catholic, Jew, Greek, it, I don't care who you put in there. Call upon the name of Jesus. You shall be saved. Put your faith, your trust in him today. I'll lead you in a prayer of faith. Now, I could train a parrot. It would mean nothing. You've got to mean it from your heart. So as I pray, pray these words if you mean it. Dear God, I know I'm a sinner, and I know I need you. I ask you right now to be my Lord, my Master, and my God. Help me not to be ashamed of you, but to profess you to others. In Jesus' name I pray. If you prayed that prayer and you meant it in a moment, we're going to stand. We'll have one verse of invitation. Come quickly. I'd like to pray with you. You don't want to join this church. That's perfectly fine. We're here to help you. So you come. We'll pray with you, encourage you, give you some materials, help you. And, but you say, well, we want to be a part of this church. That's perfectly fine, too. Let it come and let us know that. Maybe you just want to come and pray at the altar. That's fine. Father, take now this simple message. Please use it to bring glory to you. It's in your holy name I pray. Let's stand. Brother Brian will lead us. You come quickly, please. Amazing grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. But now I'm found Was blind But now I see Amen. Well, next Sunday, Lord willing, we're going to look at Jesus and angels. Amen. How angels assisted and worked with him and we just have two more messages on angels, and then we're going to kind of close this up and move forward. But I hope that uh, you'll be with us, bring a friend, 
And then also join us Wednesday night from six, at 6.30. We're going through, we're just in the very early stages in chapter 2 right now. Uh, Job and how to deal, how God deals with suffering to help us, to bless us, and to uh, break us and use us. So uh, God bless you. Are you glad you came today? Yeah. Let's give the Lord praise. Amen. I want to thank you also for your faithfulness. You, you all are so faithful. I appreciate you so very much. And Brother Bryant, I want to thank you always. You always do such a wonderful job. God bless you, brother. And in fact, we're getting ready to sing. I wish I had time to preach on this. I don't have time. But um, this is the after God destroyed 3,000 people because of the they were worshiping idolatry, the golden calf. He gave to Moses, he said, I want to bless the people. And the blessing is what we call the ironic blessing or sometimes the ironic prayer. So this is, this is how every Jewish sinner does their benediction. But we sing it because he's in our heart. Amen. Amen. So uh, I just want you to know, this is the message that God gave the Lord bless thee, the Lord keep thee, may the Lord make his face to shine upon thee. So I hope that it'll be more than just singing. You understand, you're singing scripture back to the Lord. So go right ahead. The Lord bless thee and keep thee. The Lord make his face to shine upon thee. Good to see you today. And be gracious unto thee, and be gracious unto thee. The Lord lift up his countenance upon thee, and give thee peace.